Kia year 11, 12 and 13. I'm going to start filling in some gaps on some of the old scholarship calculus papers. Um, so some of these are questions we probably won't do in the sessions. And this one is from a complex numbers and trig question back um, in 2013. This is with four marks. This is eight marks is for the whole question. This is just the first half. Now this question is a really nice straightforward one. It's a lot like level three. Out of the four marks though, one of those marks is given for doing a clearly constructed proof. So I'm going to talk a bit more even than usual about how to set out your working in here. Um, this isn't the only way to do it, but I think it's one way that makes it quite clear. So the question goes like this. By considering the expansion of cis theta to the power of 5, or otherwise, now unless you're a genius, just always use their hint, right? So it's always going to be probably the easiest way to get there. Um, you could use, I think you could use some compound angle stuff here, but I haven't tried that. So we have to prove the following two identities. So the first one is that cos of 5 theta equals all of this, and the second one is sine of 5 theta. So here are the kind of intuitive things I think about when I see that question. Well, I see cis theta to the power of 5, and straight away I think of de Moivre's theorem. So that's going to help me here a lot. And then um, I also know that I can expand things to the power of 5 using the binomial theorem and Pascal's triangle. So if you're rusty on that, make sure you go watch um, one of those videos or go through delta. And then the next thing I'm thinking when I see this is that what is cis theta? Well, cis of theta is just cos theta plus i sine theta. So this is going to come from the imaginary part of the expansion, and this is going to come from the real part of the expansion. And in this case, that's about all there is to this question. So let's look at how we can start off. Well, we're just going to start by saying, let's take cis theta to the power of 5. So cis theta to the power of 5 is applying the definition cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of 5. And I'm going to work first on the left-hand side. So cis theta to the power of 5 is also equal to cis 5 theta by de Moivre's theorem. So we'll start by saying that. And now we're going to look at this. So we could put an identity in there because they're exactly the same thing. Um, so we've got cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of 5. And what does that work out to be? Well, it's going to have six terms, and they go like this. So it's going to be 5 choose 0, this one to the power of 5. Right? Just as if we were doing this, okay? but we're not using x and y. Plus 5 choose 1, cos theta to the power of 4, and this term to the power of 1. And then we're going to have 5 choose 2, cos cubed theta, and then i squared sine squared theta, and then 5 choose 3, cos squared theta, i cubed sine cubed theta. I'm going to pause the video and do the next bit without talking it through because it's really boring. Right, so hopefully you can see where this is going. Those coefficients, I could have, I think, gone straight to writing from Pascal's triangle. Um, so they're the fifth row of Pascal's triangle, and we've got 5, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Remember all that um, stuff we did on all of the symmetry should be sitting in the back of your brain. Not needed for this question, though. So that's the first thing we're going to use. And then the other thing we're going to use is pretty simple. It's powers of i. So remember that i cubed is equal to negative i. i to the power of 4 is equal to 1. And i to the power of 5 is going to equal i. So in here, we get pretty quickly to this, cos to the power of 5, cos theta to the power of 5, plus 5, I'm going to stick the i at the end this time, plus 10, cos cubed theta. Now, that i squared is negative 1, so I don't actually want plus, I want minus 10, right, because that's negative 1. And in here, the i cubed is minus i, so we get minus 10 cos squared theta sine cubed theta i. 
here, the i to the power of 4 is equal to 1. So we've got plus 5 cos theta sine to the power of 4 theta plus 1 here. And then this is i. So we've got sine to the power of 5 theta times i. And I don't need that one. That can go away. Right, so we're just about there. Um, that's the expansion that we've done. And then we're going to write something like this. So equating left-hand side and right-hand side. So yet again, it's this idea of matching things up, which seems to come up in just about every A-level or scholarship problem. So we've got this on the left-hand side, and now I'm going to rewrite this in order. Don't have to do that, but I might as well. So let's do all of the real terms first. Uh, where's my next one? Let's see. Plus 5 cos theta sine to the power of 4 theta. And then plus i times 5 cos the 4 theta sine theta. And so on. I bet there's actually no one out there watching right to the end because this is kind of obvious. But do be really careful if you are watching still. Thank you. Um, that your communication is strong. So what we've said now is not enough. We've just said that those two things are equal. And now we need to explain or write this. Re, we could write this, right? This would be quite nice, communication. And we can write equating real and imaginary parts. We need a new pen, we get the final answer. So cos 5 theta is equal to this. Remember that when we find the imaginary part, we don't want the i stuck on the end. So we've got sine 5 theta is equal to all of this stuff here. Okay, so we're done. We've done all of that now. A um, couple of things I'd say is you, you might be sitting here watching thinking, wow, that was way easier than a usual scholarship question. It doesn't mean it's not useful. Um, what you should do when you get one like this is make sure that you can do it really quickly and really beautifully. So you might want to do one of the following things. Come back and do that question again in a week and make sure you can do a beautifully written up proof. Or you could try and do something similar. So you could look at... Um, what am I thinking of? Uh, cis theta to the power of 6, right? And you could see what trig identities you could derive from that. Because this is a pretty powerful idea and it will apply to any of those. So um, whenever you're in a trig problem and you need to use an identity that's not one of the basic ones, like um, the double angles, which you'll know inside out pretty quickly, as soon as you get up to those higher powers, you can make the complex numbers stuff um, help you with those problems. Okay, um, thanks for watching. Please just leave any comments or questions in the comments on the video.